I just uh, replied to a comment by a fellow by the name of John Yin. Uh, and I replied in my usual snarky kind of way. Um, I said uh, that uh, life deniers, universe deniers, whatever you want to call it, people that essentially say that life isn't worth living or that this universe is unfair or that um, the uh, universe is in some way profane even in that it does create suffering, horror, death, disease, all that kind of thing. It's part of the deal. So this is nothing new. It goes back to Manichaeism and probably before that, probably long before that. I look at uh, these, um, I don't know, life-denying or I guess gnostic or whatever philosophies. And even though you know they seem to crystallize in the Near East or Persia or whatever, few thousand years ago, 3,000, whatever, um, for whatever reason, they strike me as probably being part of a truly ancient view of reality that may literally go back to the beginning of time, or the, I shouldn't say the beginning of time, the beginning of humanity actually thinking about these sorts of things, I can actually see uh, Zopfe's caveman actually thinking along those lines that this universe is a bad place. I'm reminded of uh, a scene from a truly fantastic French-Canadian movie called The Robe, where the paragon of civilization, a Jesuit priest, goes to Canada and interacts with the native people there and discovers just how different the aliens are to the French. The French being the, you know, the epitome of civilization in those days, at least according to Europeans. <clears throat> um, and there's a scene in the movie where um, a native Canadian, or I don't know if he would have called himself a Canadian, probably just a Huron or something, uh, he's about to be ridden down and killed, I think. There's a battle going on or something like this. And in a completely sort of resigned kind of way, which, you know, if you know anything about the native Canadians, you, you understand that kind of, I don't know, indifference to the world that strikes us as bordering on apathy. I'm... I rather imagine that somebody who's familiar with the Australian Aborigines would probably see a similar kind of attitude. And he just says to the priest, or whoever he's talking to at the time, I haven't seen the movie in 20 years, but he just says, look, this world is an evil place. Let them kill me, what do I care? And that, to me, strikes me as, you know, a truly ancient view of reality, that the world is just bad and let's just get out of here um maybe it is um i certainly think that that attitude that idea will be with us as long as existence is with us uh, again the latest sort of installation on that is i guess la nausea uh, nausea by Sartre, where you know Rocantin. I think that was his name, just was revolted by reality. So <clears throat> I think that this is not a new idea, and I don't think it's an idea one even can call old even. It just seems to be part and parcel of the human condition to sort of be torn between the idea. Is the universe good or bad? Is reality profane? Or is it just what it is? Or is, it, is reality a good thing? The uh, giddy-eyed Christian types, the Ned Flanders types, always remind me of the more extreme life deniers in that they're trying to shoehorn an absolute view of things onto a universe that doesn't seem to go along with absolutes. Um, and that's the interesting thing about, say, the Abrahamic con uh, uh, 
conventional view of God in the universe, i.e. the world is split into good and bad, the universe, the cosmos, reality itself is split into good and bad, um, and say the Eastern or Indic ones, which kind of have a bit of that here and there, as I say, my favorites, the Jains tend to definitely see um, the universe being fundamentally not even bad but just something that we don't want anything to do with ultimately um, just a pointless treadmill I guess is the way the Jains would see it they don't see it I think as truly horrible but just why bother with it um, that's nothing new and it's as I say it's present in most traditions it's more marked in the West than it is in the East you know, if we want to call it the West or the East, but you know, a lot of what we would call, or I, what we might have called in the past, primitive societies seem to merge good and bad, as opposed to uh, splitting them into halal and haram. You know, that which is allowed and that which is forbidden. The interesting thing about that is, I was talking yesterday about Gnosticism, or not Gnosticism, although it is certainly related, mysticism. Um, Gnosticism, I guess, would be a form of mysticism or with mystical tendencies based on the idea that reality is profane, the universe is profane. Um, but the interesting thing, mysticism seems to split everybody on that one issue, is the universe bad or good? And this extends far beyond philosophy and everything else. Uh, as I say, H.P. Lovecraft, Thomas Ligotti, fiction. The universe is bad. Uh, the Call of Cthulhu, uh, where they discover what really is in store for us, and there doesn't seem to be much we can do to stop it ever happening. Uh, Cthulhu waking up and instituting his reign on the earth. The interesting thing is, the way that Cthulhu's reign on the earth is, is portrayed is um, not necessarily totally horrific. It's a time of ecstatic joy and murderous violence. Um, where everything is mixed up, where good and evil are existing in exactly the same sort of measure in the universe, and they're mixed. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that would be, I guess, the Gnostic tradition, though. Um, the world is profane and... Uh, the universe is profane and forbidden and horrible, and the best thing to do is, is to not find out, uh, not deal with it. Again, the first line of the call of Cthulhu, the, uh, I've often thought that the most merciful thing in life is the inability of the human mind to correlate all of its contents, or if I, I'm paraphrasing Lovecraft, but again, it's the old idea, don't go in that room because of what you might find. And that, again, that ties in with mysticism. Don't do mysticism, because we really don't want to know what's going on in reality. Zap these cavemen, uh, if we find out. But I can also see <laughs> Zap these cavemen having a half-brother on the other side of the lake, who has the same moment of clarity, and instead of discovering that he's living in some sort of Ligotti-like Nethoscurial universe, he has the moment of clarity that doesn't horrify him, but he goes, Wow, I like it here. <laughs> um, and he was filled with an ecstatic joy that blew his mind out. No matter what happens here, it's undone at death. I can do anything I want and anything can be done to me. It doesn't matter. Uh, Omnia transient. <laughs> um, that's a fascinating thing, isn't it? And it's mysticism seems to aim at both of these. And again, all of these um, sort of puritanical Salem-like ideas that don't go looking for what's behind the appearances of reality because of what you might find, there's that attitude. Then there's the other attitude that says, Really, what we see around us is not really worth it, but not because it's profane, but because there's something that is so much better behind it all. 
the fundamental reality behind everything. Would one of Plato's cave dwellers be driven mad with horror and have his mind blown out when he's dragged up into the sun and uh, dragged up into the sunlight and sees everything for what it is when he's been safely down in his womb-like cave all this time? Um, or would he be like Arjuna in the Gita where he actually sees reality for what it is and it's good and bad at the same time. He's also almost driven by mad by it as well, but he and he wants he begs Krishna eventually to stop showing him what reality is. But you get the impression that it wasn't bad, really. It was just overwhelming. Um, and then there's, of course, the Ned Flanders view. No matter what evidence we have, you know, this Panglossian optimism um, must be maintained no matter what. Um, three options as opposed to two. The universe is wonderful. The universe is horrible. The universe just is. I tend to go along with the idea that the universe just is, but that looking behind the scenes will give you knowledge. Looking beyond what your eyes tell you will give you knowledge that won't necessarily make you happy, but it'll make you a more complete being. And it certainly won't horrify you in the sense of Zapfi's moment of existential panic. I felt that existential panic. I know what it's like. But I'm living proof that it can be overcome, or at least it can become to terms with. Um, and mysticism, if you ask me, is both the route to that existential panic and the means out of it, if you ask me, or at least if there is any other means I haven't discovered it yet. Not that I'm anything of an adept at this, but um, mysticism does really seem to be the rag by which one wipes the film off the window in order to see what's beyond a lot more clearly. Might not be paradise beyond, but um, I would certainly say it's worth the effort of finding out the truth.